Welcome back to the State of the Union. I'm Brianna Keeler. In an era of lies and indecency and tribalism and nastiness, we lost a man who tried to embody the opposite of those vicious impulses. Jake Tapper said those words one year ago on this show. Hard to believe that it's been that long since the nation lost Senator John McCain. And it's also hard to believe how little has changed since then. What would be his message to Washington now? Joining us now on this one year anniversary of Senator John McCain's death is his wife, Cindy McCain. Cindy, thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you for having me, Brianna. I appreciate it. And, and as I said, it's, it's been a year since your husband died, which it's unimaginable that it's been a year at this point in time. Um, can you just give us a sense of what you miss most about him? Oh, there's so many things I miss about him. I think most of all was his voice of reason and his common sense. He was he exhibited that not only in his daily work life, but at home. And I think those are the kind of qualities that in there's so many things I miss about him, but particularly his voice of reason right now. You know, one of the things I noticed when I um, when I lost a parent was just sort of things I learned mm -hmm. about myself in the wake of that. And I, I wonder yeah. for you, you got married when you were 25 years old and you were with John McCain for mm -hmm. almost four decades. And I wonder, what have you learned about yourself in this year since he passed away? Well, uh, I think the first lesson is that I can survive. Uh, you know, it, it's it, losing any loved one is, is always traumatic. Uh, but he was such a force of nature. I've I've had to learn that uh, I not only will I survive, but that I, I, can, I can move forward. This one year anniversary is going to be very difficult, but uh, we're very grateful to be together as a family. You personally, you're encouraging people to perform acts of civility and to come together with people mm -hmm. that they disagree with. Tell us why you think that message is so important at this moment in time. Well, as we've all w witnessed um, at some troubling times with regards to, to genuine civility towards each other and towards mankind. And our family, uh, together, all of us felt that this was a very important message that we, if we can convey anything that John McCain stood for on this one year anniversary, that would be acts of civility. He was the guy on the floor that would cross the aisle. He would work with others. You know, he was very passionate about what he did. And I'd like to remind people of those qualities and offer the opportunity for people to do just the same. Uh, go seek someone who perhaps you disagree with vehemently or maybe someone that you, you know, that you've never really liked. Uh, but go, go talk to them. Uh, maybe agree to disagree. But do this in a civil fashion and then I then then post it on social media with the hashtag acts of civility. Your husband's farewell message, which was released just after he died last year, said this, quote, mm -hmm. we weaken our greatness when we confuse our patriotism with tribal rivalries. Do you think that Washington has in the past year taken that advice? <laughs> I don't see much of it. Uh, there are wonderful people in Congress. There are many, many good people on both sides of the aisle. Um, and there are some that have tried to, to per perform acts of civility with regards to what's going on in Congress. Um, but we'd like to see more of that. And there are many people who continue to point to your husband's legacy in contrast to President Trump. I want to listen to how President Trump handled a racist chant from his supporters at a North Carolina rally. Mm -hmm. And then I want to watch how your husband responded to a supporter's racist comment about Barack Obama during the 2008 campaign. Um, he's an Arab. He is not. No, no, ma'am. No, no ma'am. No, ma no, ma he's a he's a he's a decent family man, citizen that I just happen to have disagreements with on, on fundamental issues. What's your reaction mm -hmm. when you see how President Trump handled a moment like this? Well, anytime there, there is an exhibition of disrespect in the way that took place at any place, but the way that, that was in, in the film recently, um, it, it's just, it's wrong. We need to take a step back as a country, as people, and remind ourselves uh, we are all working for the same goal, and that's for the good of the country. It's also not a good 
um, a good representation of what we want our children to learn. Former Vice President Joe Biden delivered a eulogy at your husband's funeral in Arizona, and his opening words were, my name is Joe Biden, I'm a Democrat, and I love John McCain. And that's not something that you hear mm -hmm. in politics today very often. So as you do focus on renewed civility, do you think that Joe mm -hmm. Biden would make a good president? Well, I think we need to let the process work. I think all the candidates are good candidates. They represent different views. They represent different ideas. Um, this is, this is going to be a tumultuous election for many, many reasons. So um, I look forward to hearing from all of them, and, and I look forward to, to seeing the process work. It's a lot of fun. As someone who spent so much time with your husband and would know just how his mind thinks, what do you think he would say if he saw the current state of American politics right now? Um, I think he'd be very disappointed. In fact, I know he would be. Um, he would be saddened by the, the, the digression that these conversations and these debates have taken, and also saddened that, that we're so disoriented within the world right now. You know, we had time to talk before he died, and he was very frustrated with what was going on then. And I think now he'd be even more frustrated. Well, thank you so much uh, for sharing your time with us, Cindy. We really, thank really you. appreciate thank it. You. Thank you. I appreciate, appreciate you having me.